Hyperlink's PI version VX 2.6 enables the ability to optimize their decoupling capacitors on power nets of a PCB by considering cost, number of capacitors, and number of capacitor types while meeting the target impedance. The decoupling cap optimizer is available from both pre-layout PDN editor in LineSim and post layout in board sim. In this example, we'll take a look at how to optimize on an existing design with decoupling caps already populated and try to reduce the number of decoupling caps and types and in turn reducing cost while meeting the target impedance. From the advanced decoupling wizard, you would choose the PDN decoupling optimizer option. Include all of the capacitors for the entire power net currently on the board with default models. And run the analysis. The PDN decoupling optimizer GUI displays when the extraction is done. The built-in capacitor library is loaded from the hyperlinks install directory. In the model setup tab, you can also set the target impedance for controller and the DRAM separately, in this case for DDR4 1.2 volt power net. At the first stage of your analysis, run the analysis to get the baseline and the best case impedance profile. The baseline uses all of the capacitors on the PCB with default models and the best case analysis uses an idealized capacitor with lowest ESR, lowest ESL, and highest capacitance to see if the target is even achievable. If this does not meet the target impedance, it is extremely unlikely that any capacitor configuration will. Let's look at the controller and DRAM's best case and baseline profiles separately. At the DRAM's, the impedance profile looks good from the best case and baseline basis, but keep in mind that this baseline impedance profile is based on using all of the capacitors currently on the board. At the controller, the baseline basis and the best case basis also looks pretty good. In the second stage of your analysis, you run the recommended flow with all of the synthesizers. This will run in a few minutes. You can also run with the optimizer enabled at the next stage to give you better solutions, especially for medium to large problem size with tight margin. You can visually see the synthesizers are trying to find different solutions to meet the impedance targets. Note that the video speed has been set to 15 times the actual time. Once done, the summary tab provides you with useful information such as number of baseline capacitors which is 52. The loop inductance tab shows you the amount of inductance for each of the caps. The model setup page provides you with baseline and best case results. The results page shows you the cases that meet the target impedance by a certain margin, number of capacitors and type and cost. Let's take a look at the solution with the least amount of capacitor and types. The table shows the capacitors which are needed, displaying capacitor ESR and ESL values. Originally on the board, there were 52 capacitors, and now with just 25, you're meeting the impedance target at the DRAMs and the controller. Once you determine the best solution for you, populate only the capacitors which are needed and rerun the decoupling analysis to confirm that you are still meeting the target impedance at the controller and at the DRAMs. Here is the decoupling analysis result at the controller and here are the results at the DRAM. And as you can see, the results match the optimizer's results. Here is the impedance profile provided by the optimizer at the controller, and here is at the DRAMs. So to recap, the decoupling optimizer is a very powerful tool, but easy to use and runs in minutes. It provides you with the best 
decoupling solutions to meet your target impedance on the PDN, but at the same time, saving cost.